Oh, I forgot to mention things. So if you guys don't mind, I'm going to kind of go through this. I'm going to go through the rational zero test, and I'm going to go through the Descartes rule of signs fairly quickly. But the reason being is because there's more to this problem than I want to get to. Because you guys will have problems that will say, hey, what's the rational zero test? You know, what's the possible rational zeros? They'll have problems that, hey, what's the real zeros? But really, all that kind of stuff is, you know, why do we even care to know it? Why, why are we going to be using it? So let's do, first do the P over Q. So I just say P, Q. So P is 24. So we have 24 times 1, 12 times 2, 8 times 3, and 6 times 4. Yes? OK. So if I was going to do P over Q, remember it's the factors plus or minus P over Q. Well, my Q, the coefficient of Q is 1. So we know the only factors, Justin, of 1 are 1 and 1, right? So therefore, it's going to be 24, 12, 8, 6, um, 4, 3, 2, 1. All over 1. So when doing my factors, you can say, well, all the possible rational zeros, p over q, is just going to be plus or minus. Now, you can write plus or minus for every single term if you want to. Or you can also just put plus or minus outside of parentheses and say plus or minus is going to be distributed to all of them. And just write them as 24, 12, 8, 6, 4, 3, 2, 1. OK? Very good? OK. So now let's go ahead and determine Now let's go ahead and determine um, the positive, real, and negative zeros. So when I take a look at the positive, um, I'll just take out, I'll just take out the signs. It goes to positive to negative to positive to positive to negative, right? All I did was I took the sign of each one of my monomials and I brought it down. Therefore, you can see I have three of them, right? So three minus an even number, one even number is two. So three minus two would be one. So therefore, I have three or one positive real zero. Correct? OK, now let's go and look at the negative. Now, I'm going to kind of do this in my head, because I already showed you guys what to do. Yes? Um, do you always subtract two? You, yes, you can keep on subtracting two. So let's say I gave you 10. Let's say there's 10 alternating signs. Then the number of possible real zeros would be 10, 8, 6, 4, um, 2, and 0. Okay. So now let's go and look at the negative. Now remember, the negative, you need to evaluate for f of negative x. To keep this video a little short, I will, uh, I'll, do the, I'll do the signs out here. So that's going to be positive. That will be positive. That will be positive. That will be negative. And that will be negative. I did this in my head. Okay, You guys can check my work. But you can see that there's going to be one alternating sign. All right. So therefore, we'll have one real negative, one real negative 0. OK? So, so if what we have right now, ladies and gentlemen, I'm asking you to find the zeros, OK? Ask you to find the zeros. Let's say you don't have a graphing calculator, all right? And you're not allowed to use your phone for Google. So I say you're going to have three positives and one 0, or one of them is going to be negative. And if it's rational, here are all your zeros. So how do we determine if something is zero? If we're given a zero, how can we determine if it's a zero of a polynomial? It kind of goes back up to what my first problem I did today. What can we do? We can do, how can we can determine, if I give you a zero, if I say a zero, if I say zero equals one, how do you know that one is a zero? What can you do? What process can we do? Yes? You can plug it into the equation, right? And if you plug it into the equation and you get 0, then you know it is a 0 of the function, right? Very good. However, if I get up to like 24, I'm probably not going to want to plug 24 into this. It's just going to be a lot of extra math, right? And then plus, what do I do after that? How is that else going to help me? So it, let's say you plug it in and you get a 0. Well, all right, so that tells you it's a 0, but what do you do from there? So what else can you determine the 0? Because plugging it in is a great way to determine it. But there was another way that we determined by using the remainder theorem. Right? The remainder theorem was plugging it in, but then we could also check it by what process. I did it today, synthetic division. And what's nice about synthetic division, it's the exact same thing as what you said. But when you do synthetic division, what do you get your answer? You get your answer is what we call the what? 
quotient. And that quotient is what of the polynomial? A factor. And a fa from a factor, we can find what? The remaining zeros, right? So here's the problem, though. I don't know which one is a zero or not, right? So guess what? Um, if you don't know what the zeros are, you're just going to have to check. Um, so if you don't know what the zeros are, guess what, ladies and gentlemen? You're just going to have to guess and check. Why start with the heart? Why start with 24? Let's do the easy one, 1. Once you say 1, is probably pretty simple to start. And then if 1 doesn't work, we'll do negative 1. Right? So let's do 1. Bring down the 1. 1 times 1 is 1. Negative 6. Negative 6. 4. 4. 18. So that doesn't work, right? So you go back to the drawing board say, OK, that didn't work. Let's do negative 1. So you bring it down. So negative 1 doesn't work. So what do you do? Negative 1 doesn't work, I'd move to 2, right? And then do it both for 2 and negative 2. Then I'd move to 3 and try 3 and negative 3. Um, now I use graphing technology, and I know that 3 works. So. If you didn't use graphing technology, you'd probably be a couple minutes behind me because you'd be doing synthetic division for all of these until you got up to 3. So I do 3. Bring down the 1. 1 times 3 is 3. Negative 4. Negative 12. Negative 2. Negative 6. Um, negative 8. No, no, no. It's positive 8. Positive 8. Yes? OK. So now. That's nice. So now I have a polynomial. Remember, remainder, constant, uh, linear, quadratic, and cubic. Ooh, but now, do you guys remember when I gave you that 1, 0, and I applied synthetic division? And I said, hey, once you have 0, then you can keep on doing it, right? Yeah. OK, so we know that 1 is not a 0. We know that 2, or negative 2, is not a 0. Now we know 3 is a 0, but you can either try to factor this. So you can say, you know, is this quadratic, or not quadratic, but is this factorable? Is that factorable? And you could factor it by what? Grouping, right? Mm -hmm. OK, now you could factor that and be able to determine. So here I would uh, be able to factor out. Yeah, you can go and factor that by grouping. Wouldn't be a problem. However, if you use your graphing technology, you would also notice that 4 is also a 0. So rather than factoring it, I already know I use graphing technology, so I know that 4 is also a 0. And I'll show you guys how to determine that with your graphing technology. So rather than factoring, because you know maybe I'm just not good at factoring, so I don't want to do it. So I'll go and factor it again. By doing synthetic division, I bring down the 1. 1 times 4 is 4. Negative 3, negative 12, negative 2, negative 8, um, positive 6, 24, 0. Now I have a uh, 0, constant, linear. Did I pick the wrong one? I rewrote it. Ah. <laughs> All right, big mistake. You don't want to make sure you do this. If you guys notice, if I rewrite the factor, same thing, I'm just going to get another factor. I'm not simplifying it all. When you refactor, you have to take your previous quotient and then factor that down further. My mistake. Sorry about that. Because um, you guys notice when I did that again, again I'm getting, a, I'm getting a factor to the third power. So take 1, negative 4, negative 2, and 8. Bring down, bring down the 1. 1 times 4 is 4, 0. 0 times 4 is 0, negative 2, negative 8. All right? Therefore, that becomes 0. Now you guys see you have a remainder, constant, linear, quadratic. So you have x squared minus 2. That is your factor, right? And can you solve the other two zeros by the using that factor? Yes. So let's go and do it. We set it equal to 0. Um, I'll do it over here. x squared minus 2 equals 0. x squared equals 2. Square root, square root. x equals plus or minus the square root of 2. Now, is the square root of 2, is that a rational number, or is that a e irrational. irrational number, right? So that's why square root of 2 is not here, because it's not rational. It's irrational. Now let's count the number of zeros. We have the 1 0, which is 3, 
right? So we know those are zeros, and also x equals 3. How many positive zeros do I have? Two. Two. That's issue. So I'm missing a zero. Three. No. Oh, I'm sorry. And I forgot to write down that one. We said four is a zero as well, right? So how many positive zeros do I have? Three. How many negative zeros do I have? One. And are those real? Just because it's irrational, it's still real, right? So you guys can see it follows this case. Now, however, let's pretend I only had one positive. If I only had one positive and I only had one negative, that means I still am missing two more zeros. If they're not real, then they have to be imaginary. Okay. So in this problem, though, we have all real zeros, which is cool. But you should know that when by using Descartes' row signs, if you don't have enough to count up the real, that means the other ones are imaginary. Yes? Do we have to find the zeros? Yes. You will have a problem just like this using graphing that you'll either have to do synthetic division until you find the zeros or use graphing technology. Yes? You have to start from the lowest and then every time you go Yeah, I mean, you can start from the highest. But yes, I would recommend starting from the lowest. And then every time you got that thing, you put it in a different one? Yeah, then you find, once, you, once you figure out one zero, then you take the quotient, and then you keep on working the synthetic division until you find another zero. Okay. Now, I'm going to talk to you, though, about your graphing calculator, how you don't have to do all that legwork.